Alright, so we're meant to ask the twins, who are the Grief Bead twins. But I also think I want to take a trip to the... To the, uh, disco area. Just as a farewell, perhaps? I don't know if we'll see them much more after this. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't... No, I've already talked to you since then. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Is Lily your your sister? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, kids. You've been to that island, right? On that island? The one who's been busy kicking a stone points to the bay. Yes, that one. I need to know what's there. That's... Um... Nothing? The boy pauses to think with his finger in his mouth. It's just a sea fort and some plants. You can take a raft there, it's great. And... And... The other one butts in. We make a fire. We make a... We make a fire. Mm-hmm. His brother nods. Gather the sticks for the fire and bullets. Or not real bullets, empty bullets. Bullet shells? There are a lot of them left over from the war, but this could be important. Wait, do you mean shells? I don't know what those are. What then? There are lights. The fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. Your nerve endings sting from the mention of a guy. They must mean a human being on that island, but it's cut off. Someone lives on the island? No, the boy answers, shaking his head ve vehemently. His brother looks at him, then at you. Yes, he says. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows and whips his notebook. Let's go with yes. Why is he the fire guy? Because... Because... The boy pauses to think. Because he asks to put the fire out, the other explains. Why is he asking to put the fire out? Um... I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. You shouldn't go. Yes, the other one adds, laconically, standing with his hands glued to his sides like a little tin soldier. Because he doesn't want to be found. Smoke traces. You mentioned something about lights? I... One of them. It's hard to tell which one starts. I don't know. Do you mean the uh, electrical lights? He points to the street light. <clears throat> um, yes. The boy looks at his toes. Is there anything else you can tell me about this guy? Age? Does he live there? No, he doesn't live there, I don't think. No, he lives there. The other nods. He's been there twice. Two times. Huh. The first one pauses to think, then comes to some kind of conclusion. He doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. Anything else? What does this guy look like? I don't know. They almost say in, un in unison. How come? We... We ran. He just yelled we shouldn't be there. Your father used to go to that island too, didn't he? My father killed himself. Don't say that. He didn't. His brother punches him. The boy's eyes well up like he's about to start crying. Your father did not kill himself? Or, no, just say nothing. I'm sorry. The one says to the other, rubbing his brother's shoulder affectionately. Is that all you know? Is there anything more you can tell me about the island? There's, uh... The boy says, rubbing his eyes. It's clear he has no intention of finishing the sentence. Lights? Fire guy? The lieutenant looks at you. We should check up on that island. Bye kids, take care. It'll take a while to- oh, I should check on, on the... The third sister. The third sibling. Just to see. But it'll, uh, it'll probably take a while to get to the church, but I should see them one last time. Is that? Where? 
talking about this thing? Is that the phasmid? It looks like the phasmid leaning against the wall. Wait. What if this is the fishing rod situation all over again? Are you talking about this thing? The poker? I don't see it. Try to sneak up to the phasmid. It's not the phasmid. It's not even organic. It's a fire iron. How disappointing. Of course it wasn't the phasmid. It's way too big. Don't be too hard on yourself. You couldn't have known that for sure. And besides, finding this phasmid is your secret is your special destiny. You can feel it. Give the dream of discovering the insulindian phasmid a rest for now. But soon. Soon. Uh Mister? What were you doing in my fireplace? There was a phasmid in it. I was trying to catch it. Oh. Okay. She nods. Seriously. Bye. Well. <laughs> we didn't get new dialogue out of her about the island, but we got new dialogue out of her regardless. The phasmid. What if, I don't know, this might have a- this might have a payoff. Fantastical things happen in the setting, so there's no reason to believe that a cryptozoologist creature is gonna be, like, also off ba- like, out of bounds. Like, a cryptid could be completely reasonable in the setting. And, like, it's a reoccurring reminder thing. Like, they let you just- they let you continually obsess over these little traps around the environment throughout the game. Hey everybody. Oh hey man, it's good to see you. Okay, maybe there's no new conversation to be had. She nods to you with respect and turns off her recording device. I got shot in the leg. Ouch. She looks at your leg. I did notice you limping, but I thought it might be our, your thing or something. When I was 16, I used to date this guy who had a limp, but it only shut up when he was sober. So I guess it wasn't real or something? I don't know. He shrugs, eyes glazed over. He only did it when he was sober. You could infer that he was faking it and he just forgot to fake it the drunker he got. Or it could be that it was actual pain, but maybe strange pain, like not a really concrete modern injury, but something more ephemeral. Sometimes people have limps that are more like, I don't know, psychosomatic or even confidence oriented or whatever. I once got injured in a skiing accident and when I would place, when I would try skiing again in later years, I felt unusually like fragile and weak and vulnerable in a way that didn't quite seem to make sense and it seemed to have more to do with my past feelings about skiing more so than the actual body that it was doing this king or something. I don't know. Kind of killed the, f the joy of any of it. Because I didn't really like doing it anymore because I was just thinking about fucking up. <laughs> and I think that some people, they, uh, if they have a sufficiently bad injury, sometimes they have like a ghost limp that, that persists for a while where they... Like their confidence in that limb is shaken, or maybe they just got so used to limping for so long that it kind of became the way they walk now, or something. Or variations of that. Or they might actually still feel something. It turns back to you. Anyway, shot in the leg. Sorry, man. That must suck. Yo, man! What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Yes, what is it? Now people are pretty much just caring about their business here. This whole thing kind of... Good morning, comrade! Yeah! Harder car! Yep. 
Let's hope. Uh, I should see if the Spider-Man ever came down, I guess. Now that stuff's happening. But he's, he really did vanish. Like, I think he might only exist in the context of what other people say about him now. He's, yeah. He strikes me as rather inaccessible. This place has a live button zone. I kind of get to be kind of proud that, like, I affected this area in some way. In some way, you could say that uh, our hobo cop character got a lot of his self worth and maybe even his, clings to sanity by doing these seemingly innocuous tasks everywhere that help a bunch of people out at, with random things that are not actually his case. Because if he had to rely entirely on his case for self-worth and sanity and all that, things would be going pretty poorly. Uh, it's pretty much a failure from start to finish. Things are not going well. I could explore more exhaustively, but I'm trying to not run. So, pretty much just going to characters that I already know exist. I guess there's these guys, too. Man, you're like bleeding now. Reality's really messed you up. You're like bleeding now. Yeah. Got any more urban myths? Pretty sure the medicinal spirit doesn't really count. Dunko, Dunko. The drunk man speaks in his sleep. Drool dribbles from the left side of his mouth and down his jacket lapel. Hey, wake up. There's no Abigail. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no Abigail. There's no waking him from his stupor. His mind is elsewhere. The legend, he's back and thirsty. I got smokes and piss and a little speed to spice things up. Dude's got options. Nope, it's time for us to go to the island. Between the wound and the big action explosion and a bunch of characters being dead or displaced, I'm thinking we're in the end game in one way or another. For all I know, this boat might even be a point of no return, so I wanted to check around, but it might not be a complete point of no return, because this wall thing seems like I might not have a chance to resolve it until after I get back. But it might just because I didn't succeed at the check soon enough. It happens. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Once you get in, that's it. One pull at the starter handle and you're off to the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts? Remember what the netpicker said, it's a small tank. You won't be able to go back and forth on this. You take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the I'll hold the boombox. What? 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 How else do we blast sad FM on our way to the island? Fine. He gives you the resigned shrug. Let's blast sad FM then. Sad FM is a radio station specializing in sad, slow rock songs. You seem to know its frequency by heart. Here we go. A new place. We thought we were out of those. Oh wow, he's gonna stand up? He's wounded, that's not a great idea.
The boat comes to a slow stop. Kim turns the engine off. Then there's silence. In the silence, a sputter of wings, a flock of quails takes off in the distance. There is very little wind here today. The ghost is standing still. You look at your arms, then the cliffs above you. Let's go, he whispers. <clears throat> you climb out. Hello, new location. We always knew it was coming to this. Pretty small area. It's about the size of the, stu the area surrounding the church, basically. But there's definitely stuff around, yeah. Huh. A makeshift bridge. The bombs are powerful enough to break the foundation. Oh, I was supposed to click on it from here. <clears throat> I was like, why couldn't I get over there? It wouldn't let me walk up to it. The rusted chain trails off into the ocean. The chain trails off into the ocean, connecting the island to the supply depot on the coast. This leads to the depot and Land's End. Lieutenant looks at the mechanism overhead. Ah, yes. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> God damn it. <laughs> My voice is all fucking today. Ah, uh, yes. So it seems. What do you think it was used for? Well, bringing munitions to the island, maybe? And supplies. You could also lock the bay when you raise the chain. As a defense measure... <coughs> God damn it, this is a terrible day apparently for recording. <coughs> As a defense measure, locking off that side of the bay. Lock it from whom? From enemies. He looks up ahead. Enemies of the commune of Revachol. This sea fort was a revolutionary fortification, I believe. These stairs feel ancient. Soldiers' feet ran up them long ago. There's a lingering trace of mazut in the air. Attention, inflammable. Some fuel is leaked out of the barrel. Black. Viscous. That's what's leading out to the water. Chemical spills. How classy. This might be where a shooter was. There was somebody on this island chasing people off for being here. Warm air from the inside of the building. It's warmer there than out here. The barrel says ICM. You see a star with little specks in it. ICM? This feels familiar somehow. Kim, what's the ICM? Insel Indians Citizens Militia. It's the official name of the community's ar the communards army. The black and white army of the revolution. Sounds an awful like RCM. It sounds like RCM. Revacol. Revachol Citizens Militia. It does. Why? <clears throat> the RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. He looks towards the darkened doorway. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revachol West was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. It's going to be hard to say them. Carrying around all that weight on a busted crutch is making you pant. What I'm hearing is we descend from the Glorious Revolutionary Army. There were all sorts of groups and groupuscules back then. It doesn't really matter. 
He bows to inspect the barrel. A white star. No. He looks at it. An upside down star. With its horns in the sky. Symbol of the commune. That's what I'm wearing right now. Are those spec stars too? No. That's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of insulin. Known as the face in the sea. Looks old. What's it still doing here? After... He thinks. 44 years? It's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Euphrater. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. Hopefully we find what we came here for. No way up there and the stairs are gone. Not sure what order to, of, to go in with a lot of different directions available. We'll just have to poke around. Seems like a relatively complicated layout for, the, for an island. This was once an armament rest. Twin cannons were attached here. Medium distance, large caliber. Oh, I'm up here. <laughs> I saw the cat- I registered the catwalk with my eyes, but I didn't register that I was on it. I thought I was downstairs for some reason. Careful, these stairs have collapsed. An old cylindrical generator is nestled above the ammo lift, with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall on your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel. Checking for warmth. It's cold now, he concludes. But someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Where do these wires lead? He looks down at the wall socket. Downstairs somewhere. What kind of generator is this? Liquid carbon. I would imagine it takes mazut. He points to the open fuel cap on the side of the dynamo. The kind that's favored by vagrants and fuel thieves. It's been a long winter. Long and cold. If anyone stayed here, they need a generator. Tap on the side? A hollow ring. The canister is empty. Dust falls from the generator and down into the ammo lift. What does this mean, a generator here? I don't know. I am not a philosopher. That is his idea of a joke. I mean, why is it here? Someone with basic electrical skills has restored it in order to keep the room warm. Maybe it's the fire guy. The wind outside picks up suddenly with a faint howl. Inside, it's warm. I'll wait until I have reason to pour uh, fuel into it. Might be wasteful if we if we need it. Books, mostly fantastic and historical fiction. Dishes stained with sauce and fire. A survivor's kitchen. What are we looking at here? You see candles planted on a broken rage finder. There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner, resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn out Karakul blanket. Someone has squat someone has been squatting here. The lieutenant inspects the bed. The linen is fresh. Recently washed. Oh, recently. A flash of pain interrupts you, making you wince inside, instead of letting words out. You know, officer, you can rest here. He looks at you with a touch of concern. If you're feeling tired, I, I will keep watch. 
You could use some rest for what's ahead. Maybe a little shut-eye. Just an hour. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there. In the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. That seems like a slightly awkward sleeping position, especially when you have a leg wound. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe? The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyes close until... Until? You feel yourself standing up in the darkness, right next to the mattress. Slowly the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. How long was I out for? Kim? Alright, my environmental interactions have gone away. Lieutenant's no longer here. Go outside to the beach. The door is still here. Closed. Feels strange somehow. You can't get in. Kim? This feels like some, time, some kind of scripted sequence because all the interactions went away with the environment. Something's going down. Go down to the chain. There's something there. The other side of the island? That's unfortunate because I came over here. <laughs> I feel like this place wouldn't be so empty. I should probably come back here when we're done with whatever sequence this is. I think the structure might cut this entire island, this entire side of the island off from the other side. Yeah, I can't click over here at all. So I guess I made a mistake by coming here? No. I can't go back inside. Where's the chain? I don't know where the chain is. Is it up here? I saw it on the left side of the island, but... Oh, there it is. There's more chain. Walk into the water. Now. That's not a normal thing to do right now. That seems dangerous. You see her footprints on the water. Okay, I'm just walking on water now. This is normal. Further. Yeah, I'm not awake right now. I'm super not awake. Oh. 
Isn't this where it happened? The the bubblegum memory? Vidya Revishal? Dolores Zia. The innocence of humanism. Internationalism and welfare state. Turns around to face you. She has an airship bag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. Off to advise the, the Queen of Chest, most likely. This is the Holy Caesarian of Mundi and Insulin. Definitely not your wife. You need to talk to her. Think of the historical knowledge you could gain. I don't know, man. What if the Hol Holy Suzerain... What is the Holy Suzerain doing here? Something's off. What's in the bag? Just my scepter. My globe crucigere. A spare silk gown. A toothbrush. Travel documents. The crown of immortality. Crown of immortality? Aren't you already wearing one? Oh, this. She corrects the wreath on her head on her forehead. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light. Manor and wall palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. He looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say than over her shoulder. Anyway. Hey. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, actually. Both professionally and romantically. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. How are you doing, Harry? I'm dying in a ruined flak tower. Blood's dripping down my chest. God, Harry. She shakes her head, her eyebrows knitting together with worry. You have to take care of yourself. You're not a young man anymore. If you keep going like this, you'll... Something's off. I'm sorry. I was heading to the aerodrome. I just don't have time to... He stops mid-sentence, glances to her right, then looks at her bag. She means she doesn't have time to attend to your emotions. You don't have time to attend to my emotions? <sighs> she sighs and looks over her shoulder. Where are you going? I'm going to Morova. To live there. In Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive, epic showdown. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive, epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Morova. Really? We don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us, our love, our unborn daughters. It's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Revachol and you. And you have to be alone. In hell. Forever. That's just the way it is. Oh god, whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try to now. Wow. Suggestion stat. Great. I know you still love me, man. Uh -huh. Well, that's not a very good way for things to be. It's not, but... She looks at her feet. Little golden sandals cover her toes. But what? Tell me there's something good. I don't know why I say but. There is no but. That's it? That's it. Yes. She looks up from her toes. We've talked about a million times. You will get over it. Just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. 
Where in hell? Stop. You're only making it worse for him. You never help with anything. Damn. Volition throwing mad, mad shade at rhetoric. You're not wrong. Rhetoric mostly just wants to win arguments. It doesn't really actually have intrinsic value. Rhetoric's the fucking debate me personality facet. You're right. I don't even remember who you are anymore. <laughs> See? Her eyes widen. It just takes some time. For you, it will take something like... 20 years, maybe? It was hard for me, too. I used to think I couldn't live without you. She looks you straight in the eye. Her irises are light blue, flecked with green. But... I can. If I didn't have you, someone else would do. Twenty years. That's so much time. Yes. It only took me one year. Maybe two. She smiles and wipes her brow in relief. Whew. So you felt that way once. That you cannot live without me. Yes. But that time is gone now. So very gone. It doesn't have to be like this. Maybe we could try again. No, Harry. We can't. Why? We already tried again, and it didn't work. Is that how it is now? We should just try all good things twice and then give up? By that logic. Not you two. Volition is just... <laughs> the person who gets frustrated by everyone else's responses to women, apparently. Let's try building communism twice. If that doesn't work, let's abandon it and be slaves forever instead. Yes, of course. I'm bourgeois. Because I don't want to keep hurting you. She looks away from you. What went wrong when we tried again? I can do it better. I don't know. Please. She shuffles from one golden sandaled foot to the other. In the distance, a street car screeches. Why? Why can't we be together? Harry, we can't be together because you're insane. Her eyes turn to sorrowful ovals. She avoids turning them to you. Insane how? They're turning moist now, her eyes. She slowly shakes her head and tries to get a hold of herself, brushing her hands in her, ground, in her gown. What do you mean by insane? You know what I mean. In case you haven't noticed, I am a cop. It's not easy to work. A cop. You worked there for so long, you can't even talk like a normal person anymore. It's always lists with you. Questions. Questions? Did someone say questions? They're not lists, they're trees. This is another one, isn't it? We're in a tree right now. Yeah, that she, I mean, that does summarize my actions. For people, I have questions and dialogue trees, and for tasks, I have lists. Yes, but it's not possible to talk without trees. It's not just the lists or the trees or whatever. She corrects the wreath in her head. 
with her hands trembling now. You get sad, Harry. Too sad. People can't get that sad. It's impossible to watch. Other people get sad, too. But not like you. You stayed down for too long. You only communicated with encyclopedic trivia. I was so, al so alone. In conclusion, you're ill. You're an old, insane man, and you have to be in hell until the end of your life. And I have to go to Morova. I get the feeling you're not really Dolores D. I don't know what you mean. Dolores D? She looks at you quizzically. It does not seem like a mystery she wants to get into. You're the ex something. Wasn't that Dolores D just a second ago? Now I'm the ex thing. You're confusing me. Look, I have to be at Lasan Aerodome at 10:20 p.m. I still have the a light rail to catch. She keeps glancing over her shoulder nervously. I haven't even bought the tickets yet. I'm glad we're having this conversation. I'm getting so much closure. I'm glad too. But I have to go. My friends are waiting for me on the platform. I can't let them wait. It's impolite. Cool. Your friends. Say hi to your friends for me then. I will. The evening wind blows in and the gown wraps around her like a white flag. You're the morning. The morning? I don't understand. No. The morning. I'm grieving, but you're not even dead. Oh my god, Harry, stop. I don't want to hear anything about the morning. Mourning someone who's still alive, any of that. I can't do that anymore. I'm not 80 years old, I'm 32. People my age are not supposed to mourn. He breathes out. Sounds more angry than a sigh. On second thought, you're Dolores D. Queen Regent of the territories of Mundi and Insuland and nothing else. Yes, Harry. I am. Things have gotten much better for me, now that I'm the ruler of the known world. She pulls up the silvery sleeve of her gown to check the time. Oh god, it's already so late. I have to go, Harry. A tiny golden watch with red straps around her bony little wrist. Yeah, nothing's happening here. I bought you this figure of a headless fawn rider. I don't want it. She doesn't take it. It looks expensive. I don't want it. I thought you liked figurines. I thought the figurines were getting you back. Were for getting you back? Well. That's not what the figurines do, Harry. But then the figurines don't do anything. She looks at the headless fallen rider between your fingers and doesn't know what to say. The figurines don't do anything? Anything at all? But I thought... The historic figure, she had... She liked war games and figurines. Yes, I thought... It would be good. Maybe this revolutionary figurine, then. Maybe you can take this revolutionary figurine. It's, it's got a little musket. No. Please. Please don't give me anything. Okay. I won't give you things, then. Oh, yeah. The goal is to offer them. That was it. But you said I have a, fat, a vast soul, and you will always come back to it. We both said a lot of things. We were very young. It was her. I can feel it. I can see it in her tender, long fingers, in her wrists. Her hand wrote it, said those things. 
Actually, you didn't say it. You wrote it in a letter. A handwritten letter. I kept it in my paperwork. As Queen Regent, I write a lot of letters. She brushes a strand of white hair out of her eye. You need to recite it to her. For effect. All of it. No summaries. I have it right here. Let me refresh your memory. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Please, Harry. I just don't have time for this. Every morning, when I step out and you're asleep behind me, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows until the time I reach the fuel station. It has filled me completely. I step on the light rail and look back. Something, something, bow collector. I know it will be like this until I walk back to you. 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 Every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul and I will always, always come back to it. Okay. Stop. Yes. She surrenders. Are you happy now? No, I'm not happy. She sighs in frustration. Then why are you doing this? There's more. Kisses, kisses, kisses. Very well. She sighs. I wrote it. It was morning. You slept. There was hoarfrost on the ground when I left, on Voyager Road. It was autumn. The first autumn. But Harry, please understand. It was a million years ago. No. It was a hundred million years ago. I was someone else then. Filled to the brim with love for you. Hanging on your every word. Oh Harry, you were the coolest. But I am no longer that person. This, she points to herself, has taken her place. It will devour you, Harry. It will eat your mind. The light of the video rental shines through her dress now. A DeLorean figurine, cut in black, moves below. It's still her. Her legs, her breasts, her hips. I was cool. The coolest. She closes her eyes. With your leather jacket and your bootcut pants. Smoking in the bus stop. I wanted you to be the to be the rest of my life that day. And you were. Some of it at least. You were my first. My first kiss. My first time to have sex. The first and worst time I fell in love. I will always have that with me. It's a fact. But that is all it is. It's like a ticket stub, Harry. It doesn't do anything more. A ticket stub. Yes. Let's talk about that too. She nods. Let's bring it up, the zoo. In Le Jardin. The day we went east of the river. To the aquarium first. I was sad about my mother. I don't even know why. The shimmer of the fish tank on my face, the octopuses. It was just a day then. But to think. Were we there now? You could touch my hair. Kiss me. Talk to me about anything. Go. She shakes her head. Virtually anywhere in the world. Not like now. Now our interactions are limited to pain and regret. Can't you turn back into the person you were? I can see her in you, under the gown, 
and that wreath and my crown of immortality no she shakes her head you scared her out of me with your crying your the awful time we wound up having in the cheap rental flats you could afford can't you see I can never think that you're cool again I can only think that way about new people. A cheap rental, with mold on the walls and the tap dripping. Cheap flats, so the rich man took you from me? Yes. I have found someone for whom I can still feel the same, a copy of my love for you. Only this time he is careful and rich. He will not lose me. It will go somewhere. It will grow. Your heart burns. Through the blackness, you feel the treacle of blood on the mattress below you. Harry, do you notice how none of this is very funny? Yes, you're the least funny part about me. I hate being that. I don't want to be anything for you. I hope the decade it takes for you to get over me had already passed. There was a bow collector, a light rail, streetcar number. 42. She nods sadly. That was the light rail that took me to Kuran to school and work. Every morning, it's the same stop. I met you in, Harry, a hundred thousand million years ago. No human being should still remember the position of Adam such eons ago. It must feel unnaturally sad, a sadness so ancient it is shared even by archaea bacteria. What now? What happens now? What is the next thing we talk about? Is there really anything left? If not, we can always repeat one of the things we've already talked about. Talk about it again. He looks over your shoulder. If you do not feel like doing that, you should let me go to the Aerodorm. Don't let her. Don't let her go there. You should redo the topics. Go over everything you didn't say before, too. Make it go on and on. It's looping forever. The idea that, like, I can... They're acknowledging that it's a game and I'm in a dialogue tree and I can just keep repeating the same conversations over and over again even though they hurt because it would make her not leave. Because she's persistently wants to leave but she's trapped in this conversation for as long as I keep looping. Because it's a dream. I don't think this gets in modifications ever. You're not even human. She shakes her head. I am actually very ordinary, Harry. Below this gown and wreath, I have an ordinary soul and ordinary thoughts. The only thing inhuman about me is this. He looks around. This thing you've made me into. I'm sorry for saying so, but I just hate it. What is this? This is so far gone, Harry. I don't even... No, you're special. You had glowing lungs. My lungs do not glow, Harry. I am just like all the others. None of us have glowing lungs. Stop making me into some kind of... She will. Once you have erected the Temple of Light. I'll build you a temple of light with my mind. A temple of unimaginable proportions. It will be something no one has ever done before. I'll build it with computers. An immortal temple of light? That sounds nice. I do want someone to do that for me. Who wouldn't? But not you. I don't want anything from you. All the roads will miss her footsteps when she's gone from here. 
a completely different world. Don't go. I have to, Harry. Really, I've already missed the 8.30. Her fingers wrap around the bag handle. I'm gonna go now. Lies, sire. She cannot but love you. She has said so a hundred times. Hold on, what are you going to do in, Min in Morova? Light? Life? Culture? It's so much better than here. Everything here reminds me of you. And the horrible times we had. The nights we stayed up fighting for our dying love. I have to wipe it all off me. And be clean again. I want to be a good person again. Not this. Not what you made me into. You don't want to let me go. You don't want me to let you go, not really. You ask me not to. That was someone else. I betrayed her. Overwrote her. And I'm happier for it. And I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 1020 flight. She turns. Will we ever see again? I won't see you, but you will see me. How can that be? Oh, Harry. This is a dream, can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? She looks around. A year? Two? Five years ago? How will I see you again, then? Right here. Tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. And, Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. I'm suffocatingly beautiful and young, and I smell of tutti fruity chewy gum, like I did that time I asked for your forgiveness. After leaving you the first time, so long ago. But this is intolerably bad. Oh, yes. This is a real darkness. It's not death, or war, or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow. Oh, goody, Harry. Let's never sleep again. We're not going to get off that easy, though, are we? You're up quick. How was your sleep? Actually, it was total annihilation, Kim. He frowns. I did not want to wake you. Perhaps I should have? Was it a job dream? No. An ex-wife dream. The lieutenant nods solemnly. Let's solve the fucking case. Are you sure that you're okay? You thrashed around, then you bolted up half covered in blood from your wound. Just spit out the blood and get back to work. You're badass like that. Actually, I'm just thinking it's probably a bad idea to swallow blood. Okay. He replies simply. He's still worried. You must have really thrashed and squealed in your sleep. 
Yeah, that's not great. I shouldn't be moving a lot with all the bleeding I'm doing. So why is the blood in my mouth? Isn't it? Isn't my leg wounded? Do I still have like internal bleeding or other issues? I'm continually somewhat uncertain of the spe the specifics of my bleeding. Wow, this really some wow. Thursday and Friday are empty. And Wednesday's what we're here for. Tuesday partly two. These two might never come up again. Or maybe the helm maybe the helmet's on this island. Maybe. But we're actually running out of tasks entirely. I leveled up a couple times during that too. We're getting here. Stuff's happening. Alright. If I'm lucky, I can solve this day this entire quest today. Otherwise, this poor guy is going to have to sit through another one of those before the journey is over.